Hi, I'm Scott Noonan, the CEO of Audio Advice. Today I'm gonna to show you a really cool home theater that we just completed that's different from your traditional rectangular dedicated home theater. In every home theater video we do, those of you who subscribe to our channel know we try to show something different. So today I'm gonna to focus on, if you're a home theater designer or you're thinking about doing a room yourself that's not a dedicated home theater room, how do you solve all sorts of challenges where you've got a much bigger room like this, diagonals, bar in the back, full multi-purpose room. First, I'm gonna cut back to the original work we did when we were designing this, when there was nothing in the room, and I'm gonna show you how we solved a lot of the challenges using our home theater design tool at audioadvice.com, along with our design 3D capability. Now, let's go back and take a look. Okay, so let's go check out the room before we even started. Uh, you'll see we just got studs up right now, and what I want you to see here is we've got some really cool challenges in this room. Uh, the screen's gonna go up front, and we've got actually a 12 inch drop down in the floor here. So the question we always face is like, well, what do you do? How many rows are we gonna have? Where are people gonna sit? What's the height of the riser? And the customer wants three uh, rows of seats here. And we're actually gonna have uh, sort of bar countertops back here where people can see from the back of the bar. So there's a few options you could do. And I really like to talk about in every video something new. So here I'm gonna talk about design. We've got a few options. One is that we could actually put one row up here, build this up 12 inches, do another row, and then go up into the air here, uh, another, let's say, 8 to 10 to 12 inches to have three rows, but this would then block people seeing from the back, so we don't want to do that. The other option that we've got here is we could put a bar back here and then do a row in here and a row in there. Uh, because we've already got bars in the back there, we don't want to do that. So uh, the third option that we've got here is to actually do two 6-inch risers, and usually 6 inches isn't enough uh, for a riser for people to see over the people in front of them. But the great news is in the most recent version of the Audio Advice free home theater tool that we've got at audioadvice.com, we actually added in the capability to change the depth of the risers and the height of the risers and we'll actually tell you exactly how high the bottom of the screen needs to be to see over someone's head. So it does all the math real time. And what you'll see here is if we drop this down to a six inch step, we can put a row here, put one at six inches there and one here and actually move up the screen a little bit and also have the people from the back be able to see over everyone's heads. So we're gonna have a screen that basically will fill almost to the ceiling here and come all the way across. And I'll talk a little bit when we come back about whether we decide to do 16 by nine versus a 2.4 screen but we'll have the three in the front plus subwoofers. We'll have uh, side speakers here to play in. We'll have Atmos in the ceiling here, projector up here, and then rears back here. And we'll show you when we're done some of the key decisions we made based on the design. Okay, so now let's take a look how this thing turned out. You'll see here's the 12 inch step up that we talked about when we were first starting to design this. And what we did was exactly what we discussed. We had a six inch riser here. We used the design tool that you can go use yourself if you're trying to figure out riser height and depth. And it allowed us to create about a six and a half foot riser in terms of depth and add six inches here, six inches there. And look at this, it turns out perfectly and actually does the math for the sight lines to show you exactly where the bottom of the screen should be. Okay, so now let's jump over and talk about how we solve the question of a 16 by nine versus 2.4 screen. So in general, when we're either meeting with a customer in person at one of our showrooms or someone's working with our online designers from anywhere around the country, one of the first questions we ask is, are you gonna use your theater primarily for movies or are you gonna use it also for television or watching sports, et cetera? And so if someone tells us, I almost always watch movies, we're pretty much gonna do a 2.4 uh, widescreen. However, most people tell us, hey, I watch a mixture. I watch some movies, I watch some Netflix content, I watch sports, I want sort of the best of both worlds. And when they tell us that, now we've got a decision to make, which is what will work best in the room, a 2.4 widescreen or a 16 by nine screen. And so in this case, where we've got angles all over the room, it's not a rectangular room. We use both the home theater design tool, you can play around yourself with a 16 by nine and 2.4 and see what works best in your room. But we also take it and do a full 
3D design with our design team to map out everything in the room that allows us to figure out what will give you the best of both worlds. In this case, you can see because we've got angled ceilings, we're actually constrained on our ability to go right or left here, but we have more height capability because of the way we designed the risers. When you're constrained width-wise, but not height-wise, in general, you'll lean towards going 16 by nine because now you can get the biggest 16 by nine picture and sacrifice very little 2.4. Whereas you might do the reverse, if you were in fact height constrained, but not width constrained, will lean more towards a 2.4 screen to get the best of both worlds. Anyways, if you've got questions on it, you're working on it, feel free to jump over to audiobice.com and ask us questions or play in the tool. We'd be happy to help you out. So I know there's a lot of home theater installation companies that watch our videos to look for tips and tricks. And I try to include some in every single video as well as for DIYers. One of the things that we see people miss a lot of times is how to really mount the screens correctly. In particular, the usage of the magnets and when you put those on the screen to really nail it. If you're an installer or you're a DIY person and you're gonna put in a screen, go watch a video that we shot in this room to show you how to put up a screen. We also did the same thing for a projector because there's some steps you can take to really save yourself time and make sure you nail it. And so we show all of that in each of those two videos. Okay, so now let's switch over and talk a little bit about the audio side. I'm gonna cover some really cool concepts in theater design, so I'm gonna take my time through this. So let's start with, we have a 132 inch acoustically transparent screen. Behind it, we have a JBL SEL6 on the left, center, and right. These are incredible speakers that we use both for the fronts and for the sides, and we use them in the rears. But what I wanna show you, when we get to the sides, if you look at the Dolby spec, which only shows one seat usually in the middle, it will have the speaker slightly behind the head. But in most cases, best designers in the country will not put it behind where someone is blocking the sound or a chair is blocking the sound to hit the main listening position. Instead, we shift them slightly forward and slightly up, which is what all the best designers are doing. Anyways, you'll see in the tool, it does that for you. But the side is sitting here. What I wanna show you here is something really unique. You have eight feet from this side speaker to the main listening position here. However, because the room is so open over here, we go all the way out 14 feet to this side. Now, we have the benefit of these JBLs have a compression driver in the middle, but they've got an 80 degree angle, meaning all of these speakers have been designed to be placed in a way that every single seat in here can hear them. So the front and the back are getting full surround capability. However, as you might imagine, because that speaker is so much further out, the sound from that speaker would naturally get to the center listening position later than the sound from this. So we're using the Anthem surround sound receiver, the 1140. That is the capability, like most great receivers, to adjust the timing. Now what actually happens, it does a calculation of the distance of every speaker when you run Arc Genesis, which is its room calibration software. When it figures out how much farther that one is, what it actually does is it delays all of the other speakers so that the sound correctly hits from every speaker to the center listening position at the correct time. Now, when you do that, you're gonna see a slightly different challenge that you could run into even if you have a rectangular room, which is that you could be watching content and find that the voice you're hearing is not matched perfectly with what you're seeing. So Audio Advice has created a whole set of calibration videos that you can find at our home theater page on audioadvice.com. And we have everything from how to tweak your center channel to how to make sure your video looks great. But one of those is the lip sync video that's been used by people all around the world. If you see any lip sync issues in your system, go over to audioadvice.com, go down to that video, and it plays a little video in YouTube for you that will enable you to match each of your inputs, and you need to do that. You can't just do it once. So in this room, we have a Blu-ray player and a Roku. So we needed to adjust the lip sync for both using that video and now have nailed the audio with exactly what you're seeing on the screen. So one of the things that's really important when you design a room like this is nailing the acoustics in terms of getting the room right. So you probably didn't even notice in the video, but we have custom acoustic paneling that Audio Advice designed that's covering up these side speakers and actually covering this entire wall, that wall over there, such that when we designed the room, we wanted it to be that when you looked forward in the room, you came in as a guest, you would see no speakers, but just a gorgeous room. 
Well, if we go to the back of the room, this is a great example to actually see what a JBL SEL6 looks like. And you'll see what we did. We actually enabled this room to have more seats than just the nine up front. By adding this bar on this side and adding the bar on the other side, we've custom designed with the incredible builder that's worked with us on this to add four more seats behind this and also give us a great place to put the rears. Since we've got an opportunity to look at it here, I just wanna mention, you know, we sell lots of different speakers for theaters. The JBL synthesis system is one of the best home theater systems that exists in the world. The top dealers all around the world generally will sell JBL synthesis because they have slam that enables it to have really, really low sound. And then it can immediately jump with dynamics to just punching you in the chest with bullets and explosions. The way it does that is it has four five and a quarter inch mid-range woofers as well as a patented one inch compression driver. And that compression driver has so much efficiency compared to a traditional dome tweeter that it can move sound in a way no traditional dome tweeter could. The customer loved what we did with acoustic panels all throughout the front and the side of the room so much that actually they've asked us to acoustic panel this area to match everything up front, which is going to be the next step and I think is going to look totally killer. Okay, so now let's shift over and talk a little bit about the Atmos speakers. In this room, we have the front row and a back row of JBL SCL8s. The SCL8 is the matching speaker to the SCL6 that is everywhere else in the room. In other words, it is the same five and a quarter inch mid-range woofer plus the exact same one inch compression driver. And ideally, when you're designing a theater, you'd like to match up all of the speakers if you can. What I would encourage you to do if you're designing a theater for either a customer or you're doing it yourself, go over to our home theater design tool and play with the slider that enables you to move these Atmos around to get the best sound for all of your positions or your main listening position. It's honestly one of the areas that we find people make the most mistakes when they ask us to come in and update a room after someone else has done it or maybe they've done it themselves. But so we've got those in here. Let's move forward now and talk about the last piece of the audio puzzle, which is subwoofers. So we actually have dual SSW3s from JBL, which is a woofer that's hidden and you can hide it inside a sheetrock wall, but it's hidden in the wall here. It has two 10 inch drivers on this side and we have a matching one on that side, meaning we have a total of four 10 inch drivers that are all running in here. Now, let me pause for a second and talk a little bit about getting right bass, particularly in a room of this size and all this, you know, sort of angles going on. People often ask us, should I get one big subwoofer or should I get two smaller subwoofers if I'm constrained by budget? In general, in a room like this where you've got multiple seats and rows, you would much rather have two subwoofers than one. And the reason is you're gonna have these peaks and valleys in the frequency response of the room such that you could sit in one seat if you had one subwoofer in a room and you might hear a certain amount of bass, you move to two seats over and maybe back a row and all of a sudden you're not hearing any bass. By adding multiple subwoofers, you can flatten out the frequency response in the room so that every seat gets a great subwoofer sound in the frequency and, and response of the room is very similar across all the seats. And that's what we did in here. So obviously you probably can't even see this here, but we've done acoustic paneling on this front wall, but it's black. So it achieves great absorption from anything coming in here. It makes the room sound terrific, but also just looks gorgeous on the front wall and covers up these subwoofers completely. Now, once you've put multiple subs in a room, it's critical that you have a great surround sound processor or receiver that has the ability to calibrate the subs. There's very few systems out there that are really, really good at doing it. Arc Genesis, which stands for Anthem Room Correction, is built into all of the Anthem products. And it does a superb job phase aligning the subs with your speakers so that you actually get great frequency response all across the room. I can't overstate it. If you want to learn more about that, we've made a full video just on that. So nailing lighting control in a theater room is super critical. I've made an entire video on it if you want to learn more about it. But let's just talk about what we did in this room. You'll see that we've got the primary can lights, which is the task lighting up above. And then if you look here, we've got this gorgeous linear lighting that's lighting below the stairs, which enables us to turn off all of the can lights 
but be able to see a little bit of lighting for moving around when we've got movies playing, plus these gorgeous sconces. And then because it has this huge glass window in here, making this a full multi-purpose room, you can have the shade down for movies or take the shade fully up if you're watching Super Bowl or hanging out with people at the bar. So let's talk a little bit about home theater seating. Um, as we've gone out and interviewed many of our customers and run focus groups over the years, plus obviously we live in our own theaters all the time, there's a few key principles that we always come back to. First of all, when should you use couches and when should you use theater seats? For the vast majority of people that love watching movies, they're going to prefer theater seats because you get full back support and you can modify the headrest if you've got a really good seat like these that we sell to be able to give you full head support. Those of you who want to watch a quick 30 minute sitcom or a little bit of news or whatever, couches tend to be really cool in sort of open environments and we can walk you through which is best for your case. But for most people, enjoying a two hour movie, you're gonna have seats like these. Now, they've gotta be designed right. Let me show you a couple things. One, you want a really good motor that will enable you to lean back and relax. When you do that, you'll see the problem is you need head support. You don't get that in a couch or in a cheaper home theater chair. Well, we've added a diagonal head support here where I can bring it up just enough where now I'm sitting here, I have complete relaxation I'm faced perfectly at the screen, but notice that all of the speakers play now perfectly to my ears and everything has been designed in tandem with doing this. It doesn't matter how far back I go or how much I sit up. The design of the way this head works and the seat works is just incredible. The other thing you're gonna look for is a really good tray table. One of the things that we found was most uh, theater seats that were out there came with really cheap plastic rectangular tray tables and everyone we knew that had them had their wine get knocked off and all over the floor so we produced this really killer tray table that has this matte black rubberized top that literally sticks things to it so you can put your glass of wine here and you've got full swivel capabilities so when you're leaning back you can eat food put popcorn on it but make sure you think about it if you're looking at seats like this Feel free to drop over to audiovice.com and you'll see all the different little details that I don't have time to go into on this. Okay, so one of the things to think about when you do lighting in a room is ideally you'd like full dimming capability on every load. So you can see here we have control four dimmers on each of the loads, but also we've got a control four keypad here with scenes, meaning when the homeowner comes into the room, one button press on theater sets up all the lights in the room. Then when the homeowner leaves, one button press, all the lights go off. But once the homeowner or family is in the room, they simply grab this battery powered remote. We're using a control for a remote, which controls everything with just a couple button clicks. So they can choose watch, choose Roku, Blu-ray, DirecTV, and it knows to turn on the projector, turn on surround sound receiver and everything else. One button press to change the different scenes in the room or take down the shade or bring up the shade. And one button press to turn everything off. If you're looking at building a theater and you want some inspiration or try and look at videos what you've seen like this, if you go over to our main home theater page at audioadvice.com, we've got lots of showcases like this, each one focusing on a different type of theater, plus the free home theater design tool and all sorts of tips and tricks and buyer's guides, inspiration gallery. But in particular, I just want to call out three videos that might be interesting to you on rooms like this that are non-traditional rooms. So one of them was a room that we had that was an open plan from the kitchen into the living room. And so we built a theater into the living room. We had all glass on one side, so we couldn't put a speaker there. And the homeowner wanted to use home theater bypass to have a great two channel BMW system in it. Another one that you might want to go see is we had an attic that a homeowner thought could never have a theater in it because the ceiling was coming down so tightly and so low, the projector would be, have to be offset to the left from the screen. Anyways, we really go through in that theater how to pull off a bonus room or an attic space that's completely different from what you would normally think. And then finally, there's another one that we did where this huge room that's got a billiard table and it's got a poker table and a bar in the back, complete multi-purpose with glass all on one side, 12 foot ceilings. How do you find a place to put a projector and solve a room like that? And you'll see in that particular video that we hid the projector in the billiard lamp. You cannot see it at all. Come straight out into the room. Again, three cool videos to watch if you're trying to do something different like this. So finally, what I'd like to do is just 
thank this great home builder and terrific customer. It is so much fun for our team to work with great craftsmen. They have the same attention to detail that we do and homeowners that just love the product and dive in with us. I appreciate you watching and I hope you enjoy this. If you did, click like and subscribe and punch that notified button to be sure that you get notified every time we come out with great content like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you.